my name is Xander Soldat. Um, I've been playing with robots since about 2007. Um, in 2008, I bought my first Mindstorms NXT set. This is uh, when the NXT 2.0 had just come out, I think. And um, it really sparked my interest because before with the regular little robots, uh, I always had to mess around with hot glue and screws and what have you. And uh, well, I'm not very good with that kind of stuff. And uh, when I was a kid, I always played with Lego. So for me, it was, uh, it was quite a logical step to uh, buy the Mindstorms NXT. So uh, I became uh, quite involved with uh, writing software for, uh, for sensors and making the brick do things that it wasn't supposed to do. Um, I, was, I was using a programming environment called Robot-C, and I was quite unhappy with the uh, lack of support for third-party sensors, uh, and also the ones that I was making myself. So I started writing a, uh, uh, a suite of drivers that um, sparked the interest of several uh, manufacturers of, uh, of sensors. And uh, well, it grew and grew and grew. And uh, I think uh, my sensor suite is now used by uh, almost all of the first uh, tech challenge uh, and uh, other robotic pr competitions in the US. So that's pretty cool. It's like 8,000 teams or something like that. And um, I'm very heavily involved with uh, with Robot C, which is uh, actually a programming environment created by uh, Carnegie Mellon University, the Robotics Institute. And um, I'm actually currently working on getting um, Robot C working on the EV3, the Mindstorms EV3, which is the new uh, the new Mindstorms. So, uh, what kind of hacks have I done with uh, with uh, with the brick? And I'm, it's not just the EV3 brick, but also the NXT brick, of course. Um, I liked I like making it do things that you're not supposed to do with it. So um, uh, a little while back, I had a a real problem. Uh, I have two dogs, and these two dogs they like to bark. So um, uh, what I did was I wanted a way to be able to tell whether my dogs were barking while my wife and I were out. So uh, I built, uh, uh, the, the NXT comes with a nice sound sensor. It was actually the first time I ever used the sound sensor because I've never found another use for it. Um, and <laughs> I, I wrote a little program on my, uh, on my PC and I had a sensor which was able to act like a, uh, like a, a keyboard. It was a HID sensor. So the NXT connects to the HID sensor, the HID sensor connects to your laptop. So with a command line, it would send a tweet. And the tweet would say how many times my dog dogs had barked in the last minute or in, in a period of time. And uh, well, the, the truth was a lot more frightening than uh, we had anticipated. Uh, we, would, we were out on that first morning that I had activated my uh, Twitter tattle, as I'd call it. And uh, we got like, uh, dogs have barked 278 times in the last three minutes. And then next message, dogs have barked 208 times in the last four minutes. And this went on and on and on wh for hours while we were out. And we were mortified because, you know, the dogs are barking and you're the neighbors are hearing it. So, uh, yeah, that helped us actually figure out that the dogs were barking. So that was one of the, one of the hacks that I made. Um, I also got to test a, uh, a Wi-Fi a wi sensor for the NXT. And um, I spent a, a long time trying to figure out what I was going to do with it because, you know, I, I couldn't figure it out. But I played with, uh, with a thing called uh, Splunk. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. It's uh, for uh, big data mining. So uh, I, I wanted to uh, have a way to monitor the light, sound, and uh, temperature in my room in my, my, my Lego layer, as my wife likes to call it. It's basically the room where I play with all my robots and my Lego. And uh, so I wrote uh, an SNMP version 1 agent in Robot C uh, that talked to the, uh, the um, Wi-Fi sensor. So Splunk would kick, kick off uh, an SNMP get, uh, communicate with my brick, get all the information from uh, the uh, temperature sensor and the, the light sensor and the sound sensor, and it would uh, plot 
nice data and I called my project Little Big Data. And uh, I published all the stuff on my blog and everything else. I, that's another thing that I do. I run a blog. And uh, it actually got the attention of the guys of Splunk. And they thought it was a really cool thing. So uh, yeah, got to chatting with some of the engineers there. That was, that was kind of cool. So uh, the thing that I think probably got the most hits of, of any of the hacks that I've done so far was a uh, also with one of the first uh, Wi-Fi sensors um, was a uh, very simple web server programmed in uh, again in robot C and it was a real nasty hack I mean there were so many uh, resets in there so if, if it didn't get a if it mangled some of the messages it would just reset the whole device and try again and uh, what it was able to do is with a with a simple uh, URL that you could type in your browser, you could make a motor move, and a light would go either green or uh, red or blue. And uh, I had a, a webcam pointed at it all the time, and I would use UStream to for people so they can actually look and see what they were doing. And within the, I think within a one week, I had somewhere between six thousand and seven thousand hits. And uh, there's nothing more annoying than a, an, 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 an NXT motor constantly going ee, 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 the whole time. For a, and after a week, I shut it down because it was driving me crazy, right? And, uh, but that was probably one of the most fun things that I've done with the, uh, with the NXT because uh, I had never written a web server before, and it, it, I, had n I had no idea I was going to accomplish it. And, I was really pushing the boundaries of um, of what was possible with uh, the hardware that's in the NXT because buffer size is very limited, and string size in uh, in Robot C is limited to 20 characters. So you can imagine how hard it is to try and make a a parser for a HTTP request when you have a header about this size. From uh, you know, if you look at an MSIE. Uh, HTTP header, it's huge. There's so much crap in there. So it, it, it took quite a bit of fiddling. That's why I had so many uh, uh, reset stuff uh, in my actual code because, well, the program got lost because uh, there'd be so much garbage coming in from the, uh, fr from the sensor. Couldn't read it quickly enough. So um, yeah, the code was a, was, a, was, a, was a total hack, but it worked and it was stable-ish for about seven days until I shut it down. And uh, yeah, that was a really fun thing to do. Um, the things that I'm doing now with the EV3, I've, um, I've been involved since uh, 2010 with the EV3 uh, stuff. Uh, we, I was invited to uh, become part of a small group of uh, adults that uh, would uh, be able to um, help LEGO um, Develop the EV3, uh, the EV3 program. It wasn't called EV3 back then. It was called Rudolph. And if you actually look at the source code in uh, that I uploaded last night, uh, you'll actually see uh, references to Rudolph in the uh, etc. issue of the Linux OS. It's one of the. I don't know why they didn't get rid of it because it was supposed to be a secret code name and nobody was able to. I uh, was allowed to repeat it, but it's still there, which is kind of cool. And um, so I've been involved with that since 2010. Uh, we first got to see the hardware in, uh, at LEGO World here in the Netherlands. In, uh, uh, I think there was about 30 of us in total. And uh, Mr. Stephen Cannon was there as well. He was still working for, uh, for LEGO back then. And uh, he's the community manager, or was. And um, uh, so he was really involved in, in, in wrangling the, the adult fans to go help uh, LEGO with this new EV3 stuff. So um, last year we actually got uh, started getting the hardware in. We, uh, we, we were able to uh, uh, do a couple of things with it. Um, the only problem was that we never got the source code until about a month and a half, two months ago. So before that we were um, kind of left on our own devices. We had uh, uh, figured out that you can uh, boot the thing from SD card, so we dumped the OS from Flash, 
put it onto an SD card and managed to make it boot and everything else. And uh, some of us had uh, Python running on it and other things. And uh, just for for you know just for shits and giggles, really, I um, tried to make a, a Twitter client on the uh, on the EV3 and. I actually have a, a Twitter account for my for my EV3, and it, it tweeted a couple of things. Um, uh, unfortunately, I was not able to read out the sensors or anything like that at that stage. But uh, at the moment, um, uh, John Hansen and I are working very hard. Um, John Hansen is uh, is the guy who wrote uh, Bricks CC. He's quite a quite a big person in the M Mindstorms community. Um, he's a he's a, a firmware developer. And uh, he's, uh, him and I are, are working together to make a um, uh, user land library that anybody can use to link their Pythons and their Perls and their Luas and all sorts of other things. So with the release of the source code that, that we did last night, uh, we're really hoping that a lot of people will, will start getting involved and start really hacking the brick like and using it for things that it was never meant to be used for. Um, some of the things that we envisioned were using it as a uh, network intrusion device. I mean, you have an innocent looking robot, you give it, you, you put it somewhere on a, on, a, on a desk or something like that. Nobody's gonna suspect that it's running, uh, I don't know, some kind of wire shark or whatever. Uh, I mean, nothing, nothing stops it. I mean, it's just an ARM9 machine, so make it do whatever you want, right? It runs Linux. So uh, these are some of the things that uh, that we uh, would really like to see the community do. Um, and now that it's it's the source code is out, uh, the box uh, the, the 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 brick is available if you're in the U.S. Um, and pretty soon it will be available here in Europe as well. And uh, we're s like we can't wait to see what you guys will come up with because I think there's a lot of very smart people here. And I was already talking to some of the guys in st inside to try and solve some of the issues that uh, I've been having. Because uh, I've been um, working on the input part, the sensors and everything else. And there seems to be uh, a bit of a bug in uh, in one of the kernel modules. Um, so uh, what we're really trying to do is make an alternative uh, alternative programming environment that people can use. So that's... Uh, the hack, I guess, that I've been doing with the EV3. Um, things that I would really like to uh, to do is uh, get the robot C working on it, get uh, all the other programming languages. So, yeah, uh, that's basically what I've been doing with the uh, with the EV3. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot else that uh, I've been doing with the EV3. Um, other than uh, try and promote it on the on my blog and everything else. So uh, some of the things that I've been doing uh, with the NXT, with the hacking, for example, uh, I've created quite a number of sensors. Um, I created a, um, uh, a big board for a guy who was using his um, NXT for uh, artificial intelligence to make a robot that could roam aut uh, autonomously. I uh, used uh, it used eight IR sensors and uh, I think uh, twelve press buttons. So and he had no idea how to make something like that. So I hacked together a uh, uh, a big sensor platform, I guess, for the NXT. I wrote all the software for it, and uh, he's using it for a uh, for, for a uh, was it, I think it was a, a an NXT powered lawnmower robot. Uh, we were all really worried about it because, you know, if uh, nothing's more dangerous than a robot with blades. Um, so that was said, uh, that was quite fun. Um, I've also helped uh, develop a, a number of sensors together with uh, a high technic mind sensors and uh, Dexter Industries. Dexter Industries is, uh, is, a, is a bit of a newcomer to the, uh, to the uh, uh, NXT uh, Mindstorms uh, world. Uh, they started a couple of years ago uh, by a guy who was really passionate about uh, robotics and especially NXT. And uh, I helped him uh, develop the uh, the GPS sensor, which was quite kind of cool. Uh, uh, it started off with a very rough um, Arduino-powered uh, sensor, 
and I helped write the firmware for it because uh, he wasn't comfortable with writing that sort of stuff. So uh, in the beginning, it was a real hacky sensor. I mean, I, I hot glued all the capacitors onto it to stop it from, you know, breaking off because it was, it was really nasty looking. But uh, later iterations, we added uh, like a like a battery, backup battery, and everything else. So it didn't take an, at least a minute for it to get all a, a lock on all the uh, on all the GPS satellites. And um, later on, I helped him uh, develop the uh, Wi-Fi sensor that uh, that became actually quite popular. It was the first uh, the first Wi-Fi sensor made for the NXT platform. Uh, later on, uh, two more came out. Um, I was involved with the development of uh, all three. Um, this, uh, so I helped with uh, debugging the firmware on the actual sensors by using uh, logic analyzers and you know all the, the 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 stuff that you need for the for debugging this kind of stuff. And uh, that's that's stuff that I really enjoy doing. It's is the 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 trying to figure out why something doesn't work. Um, so I, I can spend hours and hours and hours just analyzing data dumps from all these sensors and everything else and trying to figure out why something isn't communicating the way it should. Um, another cool sensor that I, uh, that I, I, I had a part in developing was a, um, uh, a line following sensor made by a company called Mind Sensors. It's actually, uh, uh, a really cool sensor in that it can actually do almost everything for you. Uh, it has a, an array of eight uh, sensors that can detect a line, and it has a PID uh, controller in there and everything else, and all you need to do is feed the, uh, the value that comes back out of the sensor into your motor speeds, and it runs. So it takes all of about, I think, maybe four lines of code to make a very fast line follower. Uh, I put it on my. Uh, I actually put it on my blog at the time, and uh, it was it was one of the fastest my, uh, NXT line followers that were out there, and it was so easy to configure and to use that it was actually banned from uh, several uh, robotics competitions because it made line following too easy. So they actually had to redesign the sensor, remove all that PID stuff, and then it was back. It was allowed back into the competition. It was actually Robocop Junior, uh, the rescue uh, part. Uh, it uses a uh, it uses a line follower to find victims and things like that. So they, it actually quite a number of, uh, of 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 robots were banned at one point because they were using it. So that was kind of funny, I thought. So um, yeah, so I, I'm really heavily involved in 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 with with several companies to try and come up with new and exciting. Um, sensors for the Mindstorms platform. And I think that in the next year or so, there will be a lot of uh, innovation happening on the uh, EV3 side of things. Um, it's, it's the, 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 the new EV3 platform is, is really great because it, you've got uh, four uh, serial ports that you can use uh, to communicate with whatever devices you would like. So uh, I don't think there's a, there's any kind of sensor that you can't actually use with the EV3. Uh, UART means that you can um, uh, use a GPS sensor uh, attached to it. Um, there are, uh, you can use I square C, which is an industry standard. Okay, the clock is a little slow, it's only 10 kilohertz, but I'm sure somebody's gonna figure out how to make that go a little faster. Uh, the source code, is the source code is there, so it's, so it's all yours to tinker with. Um, the the UART uh, the UART is also al allows you to um, uh, have proper bidirectional communication, which wasn't something that you could do with the NXT. The NXT was uh, on one port; it had an RS four eighty five, but it was uh, it was like um, what's it, not duplex, but the other one. Uh, so uh, you could only you could only communicate only one could communicate at the time, which was ma which made my um, web server so incredibly difficult to make as well because if you got unsolicited data on your serial everything was garbage anything was it was just you know you couldn't do anything with it anymore so uh the new the new ev3 will not have that problem of course 
and uh, it goes up to quite a high speed. It goes up to 400 uh, kilobaud on uh, or four, 460 kilobaud on the first two ports and half that on the uh, third and fourth ports. So there's really no limit to what you can do with that. Uh, the the chip runs uh, at 300 megahertz. It's a little slower than a Raspberry Pi, but uh, you have uh, such a that I think the power of the EV3 is is all the stuff you get around it. It's the uh, the ability to prototype very quickly using all the Lego pieces. Um, I've seen some some pretty amazing things that people have uh, have wor are working on at the moment. Um, uh, that will be revealed in the very near future that do s the most amazing things. Uh, I don't know if you guys are, are familiar with the Lego World. Uh, it's actually the biggest Lego event in the, in the, in the world. It's here every year in, um, in the Netherlands. And uh, this year there's going to be a massive Lego Mindstorm stand. We're actually going to be close to the door as you come in. It'll be there. Uh, it's going to be, I think, several hundred square meters. Um, we're going to have uh, an incredible amount of de uh, loads of demos and everything else and some cool hacks. Um, hmm? in, uh, it's in um, October. I think it's from the 17th until the 20-something of, uh, of, of, of October. And uh, it's in Utrecht, in, the, in the, the biggest, one of the biggest venues in the, in the Netherlands, actually, for this kind of thing. And... Um, I'm actually working on some uh, football playing robots at the moment, also NXT, also EV3 powered. And uh, I'm hoping to have them finished by the time. Um, uh, I'm also working with, uh, with another guy in, 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 in Canada who's actually working on uh, artificial intelligence and, uh, and, and neural networks and everything else. And uh, we're busy trying to get uh, the neural network kit that he's been working on to make it work on the, uh, on the EV3, which is really kind of cool. And because um, he's got a whole programming environment around it that makes it really easy to um, simply click a bunch of neurons together. Uh, uh, you tell, uh, you give it a couple of parameters. It actually generates C code, which you can just compile and then push to your brick. It works for the NXT right now. It compiles it to Robot C, and Robot C can just uh, be a, you can just copy and paste that into your Robot C uh, in, uh, integrated development uh, uh, environment. Uh, but with the GCC, it opens so many possibilities. Uh, it makes it uh, you have so much more memory on the on the EV3 with the uh, the NXT. I mean, you can imagine you can't make a very large neural network if you only have 64k of total RAM, a half of which is consumed by your VM. Uh, with the EV3, you have 64 megs at your disposal. Uh, when the VM is running, or the Lego VM is running, I guess you have a you have a little less. Uh, there's a couple of RAM disks, so well, even if you have uh, 50 megs left at the end, that's still a lot of memory to put your uh, neural networks in or whatever. You probably can put more in there than the actual processor can handle. Uh, but it opens so many doors to uh, to to making great things with uh, with the new platform, and. Um, well, I'm kind of um, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that all this stuff will take really take off in fall when uh, it becomes more widely available. Universities start using it uh, and all this kind of stuff. So uh, those are the hacks that uh, I've been working on, and uh, this concludes my uh, my talk. Is there any uh, are there any questions from people? Yes. Yes. Well, uh, for the NXT, uh, you have you have two choices. Well, three. You can use analog, which is not very useful for this in this case. But you can use I square C, which is limited to. Standard on a standard firmware, it's limited to about 10 kilohertz, like it's a pretty slow clock speed. But you can also use RS-485 if you like. It's not RS-232, it's RS-485. Um, Dexter Industries chose to use I2C because 
Uh, well, with an update rate of 4 hertz, GPS doesn't really generate all that much data, and if it takes you, I don't know, 20 milliseconds to get all the data across, eh, it's not so bad. So um, what he, uh, what what we did was we have the the Atmega on the on the actual board. It's, it's just it run. We just made it with Arduino, really. Um, we used a, a generic GPS library that we found on the net. Uh, that communicates with the uh, with the sensor using just the standard serial uh, the serial uh, object, and there are some things on the actual chip that do uh, that allow you to um, calculate or set a, um, a particular destination, and it will tell you the angle you need to travel at. So you can you it will tell you okay you're c getting close to the angle you're supposed to go at. And once it starts reading zero, you know you're headed in the right direction, right? So uh, it can also calculate distance between two points. It has a whole bunch of functions that would be, um, well, I guess time-consuming to do on the uh, on the on the on the NXT. If you can just have the sensor do all that stuff for you, so um, yeah. Basically, what we did was we made a bluntly speaking, like an RS232 translator to I square C with all the stuff in there to make it, you know, a bit more, to add some value to it, I guess. Oh yeah, it can't do anything else. Yes, that's, that's quite, that's correct. The, the, uh, the, the NXT is completely incapable of doing anything other than being a master. It's because all the stuff is actually bit banged. There's no interrupt driven I square C on the NXT. Um, well, there is, but it's actually used internally to communicate with uh, the uh, coprocessor, which is in the on the NXT that does all the motor control and um, uh, it reads the analog sensor stuff. And that's a high-speed I square C connection. Uh, I think it runs at a hundred uh, hundred kilohertz. And um, yeah, the, the other stuff is all bit banked, and that's why it's. It's uh, it's so slow. It's only ten kilohertz. The EV3 does not do I square C any faster because it's actually hard coded to do no uh, to go no faster than ten kilohertz. The reason for that is that the uh, ultrasonic sensor that Lego produced is actually completely incapable of running anything faster than ten kilohertz. It will just die. It will crash and hang. Uh, it also has some other weird oddities. That are actually coded for in the in the in the kernel modules, in uh, for the EV3, where the, there's all sorts of hacks in there that make it possible for the ultrasound sensor to work with the EV3. Uh, it's not it doesn't play very nicely with the uh, supposed uh, I square C uh, specifications. Uh, neither does the NXT. In fact, uh, the NXT. Uh, does not allow clock stretching or anything like that. So uh, if you have a slave that tries to clock stretch, it just crashes the bus. The bus, uh, it's completely, uh, it's com yeah, it's pr it's pretty crap. Um, I don't know I, uh, off the top of my head if the EV3 allows for clock stretching, uh, but it's also a bit banged, so I would say probably not. Um, uh, but it would it would be good if, if somebody made that made that work, of course, and made the speed go a little faster. Uh, there's all sorts of things that could use a little improving uh, on on the EV3s on it, but that wouldn't make it necessarily better for uh, say the 10 to 14 year old kid, but would make it much much better for you know people like us who like to hack things and make them do things that they weren't supposed to. Um, it w the one of the best things would be an interrupt driven i square c implementation of course uh i don't know if that's possible i haven't looked at the hardware closely enough to uh, to be able to see but um uh, at the moment it's all it, that's all bit bang too all the i square c stuff so it uses a standard timer that just ticks every uh, uh point oh oh one millisecond so yeah any other questions
yes, if you make no changes to the firmware, if you if you create a sensor, like I mean, this is how companies like Hitechnic and Mind Sensors and Dexter Industries do their thing. They're making third-party sensors for uh, uh, an existing platform. Uh, they're not making any changes to the actual platform themselves, but nothing stops uh, nothing stops you from creating a sensor for the EV3 platform, creating a uh, block for the for the graphical programming language for it, and making it work. Y if if you are uh, yeah, if you want, you can do that. It's I don't think there's any licensing issues there, at least not that I'm aware of. Uh, Mr. Canvin shakes no, so no, no, uh, you're safe. Le it's GPL v2, so uh, yeah, you can do with it as you wish. Well, as long as you p put all the stuff back in the, in the community, of course. Uh, unless it's for your own use, then you can do whatever you like. Um, so yeah. You can do whatever you like. Any other questions? Um, I would like a more modern Linux v uh, Linux OS to run on it. Right now, it's uh, it's a rather old Armstrong uh, uh, OS. It's running kernel 2.6.33 RC4. It's it's quite old. It's using an older uh, tool chain. It's uh, code sorcery 2009 Q1 203 or something like that. So it's all old stuff. But that's because they started working on this stuff back then. So it is time consuming to continuously upgrade your tool chains and everything else. And they just then it, you're working with a moving target because kernel changes. Okay, shit, our our modules don't work anymore, or the the the, the hardware is now working slightly differently. You got to go through the whole process again, and uh, it's just too time consuming. So they 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 really viewed it as a an appliance, like a microwave. Do you? I mean, for the kid, the EV3 is no different than how you would perceive a microwave. You're not going to worry about the firmware level on your microwave as long as it cooks your food. You don't care. For a 14-year-old kid, it doesn't care that it's running 2.6 point uh, whatever. Uh, it just wants to know uh, how to make the motors move. So it's for for Lego, it was more important for them to have a working platform for the core market. Uh, which was the kids, because the adults will fix all that stuff themselves anyway. I mean, it's, uh, that's why there's there's NXC. That's why there's the enhanced firmware for the NXT. Uh, that's why there's uh, that's, there's like 35 programming language for the NXT, probably even more if you count some of the more exotic ones. Uh, there's Java running on it. Uh, there's 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 actually a guy who's almost got uh, all of the Java stuff working on the EV3, and that's going to be published pretty soon. Um, so uh, you'll have a pr like a completely functional Java implementation for the for the EV3, which is really cool because the it uses the same almost the same API as uh, Lejos, which is the Java implementation for the NXT, and it's got an extremely rich uh, API that is 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 great for it. It, it does like it has um, uh, classes for making um, uh, navigation robots that can uh, you basically tell it okay this is the layout of my motors and this is the this is the kind of sensor that you can use to get your heading and basically you say okay I want to go in that direction at this particular speed it will calculate all your motor speeds. And uh, continuously check the whatever sensor it is that you're using for calculating your heading, uh, and it just makes it work. It's this stuff. It may it allows the developer to focus on the things that are truly important, rather than all the fiddly stuff that you don't want to have to redo every single time you make a robot. If you want to make a football playing robot, do you w do you want to have to worry about how to control? The position of your robot, or do you want to worry about the uh, game, uh, the, the the gameplay that is truly important, that makes the robot play football? 
this is the kind of stuff that that it makes the Java implementation for for the NXT so incredibly powerful, and that's what's going to make the Java implementation for the EV3 so incredibly powerful. Is uh, you can not have to worry about all this well stuff that is not really important. It's the same reason why we program in C and not assembler because we don't want to have to worry about uh, uh, all the little fiddly bits. I wrote a, 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 a PWM controller one time uh, in assembler for uh, the, parallax, uh, the parallax propeller. And it was a nightmare because I had to do a long division all in assembler because there was no such, so no such opcode. And it took me forever to debug that because it wasn't working at first, of course. Uh, no code ever does. But uh, it's, uh, that's, uh, it's really frustrating to when you have to deal with trivial stuff when you really want to just focus on the things that are important. So uh, Robot C is another one of those programming languages that do takes a lot of that stuff uh, away from you and allows you to focus on the things that are truly important. Uh, I, of course, I have to plug Robot C because I'm working on it. Um, but uh, Robot C has a, has a built-in debugger uh, that's a lot easier to use than uh, GDB. Uh, well, I think anything's easier to use than GDB, really. Um, it, it does the debugging on the, on the VM level, so the code runs inside a virtual machine. The virtual machine is the same, or pretty much the same on the Arduino, it's the same on the Lego, uh, pla uh, the NXT platform, uh, it's the same on the uh, uh, VEX Cortex platform. So you program something in Robot C, it will work on, I think, probably about five platforms right now. And with the EV3 coming, it'll probably be about six. So it makes it extremely powerful for uh, for teachers to use. It's a it's a meant for an educational platform. It's meant for for uh, kids really. Um, and uh, so yeah, uh, I think it, I think high level programming languages are are really important. And I would love to see a lot of them on the on the EV3. Python, I think, is 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 a really important one. Because uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, I think the power of Raspberry Pi is all the, the Python modules that are available for it. Um, I would love to see that for the for the EV3 and uh, take some back some of the Raspberry Pi user space. Uh, because I think it's I think the the, the the power of the EV3 is is that you can literally build a robot in in ten minutes. Have a robotics platform. Okay, it's going to look a bit crap. But uh, you're gonna have to spend a bit more time on it if you want to make it look decent. But you can have a robot with two motors and wheels in a matter of minutes. It's really just simply clicking it together. Well, if you have, if you're using a Raspberry Pi, yeah, you gotta solder the cables. You gotta have the the the, the, the motor controllers. Uh, you have to worry about your power. You're gonna have to uh, make sure that uh, uh, you don't get funny. Uh, feedback from the power from the motors uh, going back into your Raspberry Pi and frying everything. All this stuff, you don't have to worry about it when you're using the Mindstorm's EV3 or NXT platform. So, uh, yeah. It just, I would love to see uh, all those things that make the Raspberry Pi so powerful come to the EV3. Like, the web, uh, one of the things that I thought was really cool, and it was also mentioned in, uh, in Stephen Camden's uh, presentation yesterday, is the uh, web IDE. Uh, that uh, allows you to have a, uh, an actual embedded um, environment on your Raspberry Pi. I would love to see that on the uh, on the ra on the uh, uh, EV3. I think that would make uh, make it really cool. You just plug in a, a Wi-Fi dongle in there, you uh, start it up, you log in. Like the IP address would come up here, up here on the on the on the screen. You log into it. And all your stuff is put into, I think it's paste bin. It puts all the stuff in. And whether maybe we can make it work with Dropbox or something else, or Google Drive or whatever. And uh, you wouldn't have to worry. I think it's cloud-powered. I mean, it's all, the, it's all the hype, so uh, why not try and make it work on the EV3? So uh, any other questions?
I'm actually, I, I'm uh, I, for, for another little while. I'll be in the uh, in the maker shed or the maker tent or whatever it's called, um, and we have a whole bunch of hardware. Some of it can actually be disassembled. So bring a screwdriver and a pliers, and you can uh, let loose on uh, some broken NXTs and EV3s that uh, are just waiting to be completely disassembled and uh, played with. Uh, we have also we also have a, a, a massive box full of Technic Lego and uh, bricks that can be played with, actually programmed and stuff like that. Uh, we have sensors and everything else, cables, you uh, you name it, you can play and uh, have fun with uh, making a uh, Mindstorm's EV3 robot. And maybe hack something together yourself. I'm only here today. Mr. Stephen Canvin will be there for the rest of the week.